everyone i hope you're having an amazing day um so today i'm going to talk about an abstract class it will be a very short uh, session today um so if you haven't watched my previous episode about dynamic polymorphism or static polymorphism i would highly encourage you to do so before you come t and watch the session okay um so the first thing first you need to register for an org if you haven't done so i trust you guys have done that already um so i have logged into my org and so let's go to developer console okay so to go to developer console uh go to this gear cog icon at the top right hand corner and jump into developer console right so i'm gonna demonstrate using a very textbook example today because it's very common and very easy to understand okay so what is an abstract class okay abstract classes are those classes uh, which you can't create an instance right so I'll explain to you what I meant by that. So let's dive into example first, okay? So first thing first, you need to create a class, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create an animal class, okay? And then we will inherit different animals from an animal class, okay? So go to new Apex class, just say animal. Um, so what we're gonna do, so if you look at this class, okay, this is a very normal class, right? So let me go to uh, execute window. And if I do something like this, animal a equals to new animal, obviously it will work, right? No problem whatsoever, okay? But if you wanted to define a class as an abstract class, right? So you have to uh, type uh, abstract keyword, uh, before a class right and now what happens is when you try to create an instance of this class it will complain okay so let me try this again try to run the code again okay so it will complain right because what it tells you right look if you are defining a class as an abstract class right I will not let you create an instance of a class right is the responsibility of the class which inherits me will uh, you know use it as an instance okay so let me create a method right <clears throat> so let's say public abstract okay avoid type of animal okay now if I do something like this okay it will complain okay the reason why it will complain right let, let me try to save it it will complain because if you define a method, right? See, you can define a class as an abstract. You can define a method as an abstract. So if you define a method as an abstract, right? It expects you not to have a body, right? Because an abstract class should not have, abstract method should not have a body because it's the responsibility of a class which inherits it will give you the definition, okay? So you can't have it. You can't put this uh, bracket here. So you do something like this, okay? Now, I wanted to define the type of animal. It will be done by a class which inherits it, okay? So let me create another class. Okay, let's say dog. Okay. And let me extend it. So that's why I said you should watch my episode on uh, dynamic polymorphism before you come and watch this one because then you will not understand what, what I'm doing if I... If you don't know what extends mean, what inheritance mean, right? It's very important you guys understand the concept of uh, inheritance first, right? I'll put the link in the i button below for your reference, okay? Uh, so what we're gonna do? So, so now when you when a class inherits an uh, abstract class, right, which contains an abstract method, it forms an agreement with an abstract class that look, I will implement your method, right? In this case, the dog forms an agreement with animal class uh, saying that um, um, it will implement uh, this type of animal method, okay? So what I'm gonna do, so if you don't do it, see, it's complaints, right? And what's the complaint is? Let's look at an error message, okay? Class dog must implement the abstract method, right? Which is, that's what, exactly what I'm saying because it forms an agreement. Okay, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we're gonna, uh, actually, we're gonna copy it here. Now, the thing is, you can't use an abstract keyword here. It has to be an override, okay? Because 
the thing is that if you are using inheritance right and if you are if you wanted to implement a base meta right which is in this case is an abstract uh, animal um, so you got to uh, write override okay so you're gonna do system.debug you can set dog okay now let's create a one more class something like that let's say cat okay so you're gonna do cat class okay and we're gonna copy exactly the same okay everything here all right so we're gonna do how we say here cat okay all right so that's how an abstract class works because you have to it can only be used using uh, inheritance right you can't use it directly because you can't access the method of animal here you can't access the type of animal method here it has to be accessed through the child class right so now how do I use this method at first place you might wonder right I wanted to access this you know dog class or animal class how do I use it okay that's a good question let me show you how to do that so go to debug execute window okay so what we're gonna do <clears throat> we as you know that we can create an instance of an abstract class okay so this will work because you are actually defining a data type now what we're gonna do we're gonna do equals to new right dog because as I said you can create an instance of a dog right because but you because dog is not an abstract class because there's no abstract keyword here as you can see animal is an abstract class okay now I can do add dot type of animal right and so let's see what's the answer here oh, it's gonna take some time it's gonna take its time okay while it runs okay all right so it's dog okay so we're gonna do we're gonna do something more a equals to what can do new cat right so we're gonna copy this so what's gonna happen it will print cat and dog because the reason is you know if you remember the concept of polymorphism right one name many forms so in this case the name is type of animal but it's it's behaving differently right based on a different instance right in this case the first case it will show dog second case it will show a uh, cat right because one name many forms remember this one name many form it's one name type of animal but it's behaving differently based on a uh, different instance you're assigning okay so in this case right it will print <coughs> uh, both dog and cat right so this is all about abstract cloud this is all I wanted to cover today right I wanted to make it very simple I hope you understood something out of abstract class if it's very new for you I understand that it can be a bit confusing I would highly encourage you to uh, try out different stuff or, you know try with shape right you know try with the shape object right and you can inherit rectangle or uh, you know uh, hexagon or whatever right try that uh, you know and so next time I'm going to talk about interfaces which is very important right apex now is very important uh, and one thing you have to understand in Apex is very important that you guys use it as an object-oriented language instead of procedure language, right? That's what I'm trying to cover here to to justify Apex as an object-oriented programming language, right? So we need to understand how to create an instance of a class, you know, when to use an abstract class, how to use a dynamic polymorphism, when to use static polymorphism, when to use interfaces, right? And then we're going to talk about error handling, which is very important right because it's very important that you guys do error handling I'm going to talk about that as well um, then we're gonna look at some other aspect of it and then in the end we're gonna do a small project right because it teaching you programming is just not enough but I wanted to show you how to take on a problem when you get a small customization and how to write a test class right a very simple class I'm not gonna use any you know financial force um, uh, uh, the library to mock the test because there is a enterprise framework library out there which you can use it but I just don't want to use it to confuse you guys right we're gonna do everything very simple here okay so my main task is for you guys to understand apex feel comfortable you know uh, when you are starting with an apex so that you can embark on that you know programming journey if that's what you're after right because I know that you guys are amazing admins 
right? You can do amazing stuff using, you know, process builder flows, uh, you know, other stuff. But at times, you know, it's very important you guys need to understand how to code, right? Because if you're, if you're embarking on an architect journey, right, you need to have platform dev one certification, right? Right. Okay. That being said, uh, greetings and adios. Take care.